In this video, I'm going to demonstrate for you how to use rule-based mapping, which is a feature inside of Azure Data Factory's mapping data flow, to allow you to build resilient data flows by mapping your incoming data sources to a canonical model. So why would you do this? The reason to do this is to define your data flow from a canonical model and then downstream from there do all of the transformations that you need to do against that data. This way, if you are dealing with flexible schemas, changing schemas, source data that changes, you are protected against those changes. And you can do this without needing to uh, design a series of complex regular expression patterns in your transformations and derived columns. We'll do this by instead doing the matching early on upstream in this data flow in a way that can define a canonical model. So let me show you what I mean. In this example, I have the source of a movies um, database. It's a CSV file that has ratings and genres and years titles for movies. Let's take a look at that real quick. So my data preview. I'll just go ahead and refresh this, and we'll take a look at what a sampling of the data looks like. So we have uh, movie ID, we have titles, <clears throat> genres, year, rating, Rotten Tomato, which bothers me because it's misspelled in the source, so we'll take that out later. But um, uh, you will see there is some um, bogus data in here that I have in the data set so that we can always do filtering and cl data cleansing as well in another video. But I want to transform this data, and I'm going to receive similar files of other ratings of movies over time, but I'm not guaranteed that whoever delivers this file to me is always going to use the exact same uh, column header names. They may change some of these field names and the casing of them may be a little different. So I need to uh, be protective against that, those changes, that flexible schema. And also, I don't know the position of the columns and they may add or change columns. So what I'm going to do my next step in my data flow is I'm going to use a select transform to map to a canonical model. So in this very simple demo, I'm only going to be interested in four columns because what I'm going to do at the end of this is I'm going to average the rating of the movie by year. So I want to take, I want to have a model that is going to be title, year, rating, and genre. This will define my data models. Now everything downstream from here will be able to work regardless of what comes in from the data source names as long as they are matched here on the left hand side. So the matching rules I'm using, and this is using rule-based mapping within data flow. I'm using the locate function to look for the lowercase name title within the incoming name of the field. So the name is coming from the projection on the source. I'll go back to that in a second to show you. I'm using lower just to um, have the same casing uh, with the string I'm searching as well as the string coming in, in the column name. And I'm saying if it's found anywhere within the index of that string, then it's a match. So if it does not match at all, then it's a zero is returned. Now the projection from the source, in this case, are the columns uh, that I showed earlier in the data preview. And so I'll just show you the projection. They are movie, title, genre, year, rating, and rotan tomato. I misspelled rotten tomato there. And each one is a string because this is a CSV text file coming. So everything is defaulted to string. So all I have to do is, I, all I have to define is a matching pattern with each of the columns that are coming into that uh, this data flow, and now this data flow becomes generic. The way you add these is you either add up here under Add Mapping or over here on this plus sign. Both will give you now options of either fixed mapping or rule-based mapping. Fixed mapping is simply left to right side, so you take an incoming column and you map that to another name where you can um, uh, you can remove fields and you can add fields with that as well. If you use rule-based mapping, then you get this ability to do the, uh, the pattern matching, regular expressions, and those sorts of things. So I'm using rule-based mapping here. Okay, so I've defined my model. Now one more step, and that is I want to cast a couple of these columns. Again, because this is coming in a string, I want to um, cast these, uh, some of these columns, I want to cast the year and the rating to integers. So it's a simple cast using derived column, I'll just call this cast. That's it. Now from here on, all of my logic that sits on the right-hand side of my data flow can stay the same without ever um, changing. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do an average rating by year using the aggregation transformation. And the way I do this is I group by year. I'm sorry, get it back. I group by year. And then in the aggregate function is where I'm putting my um, average. And very simple, just average the rating, rounding it to two places. And you saw, I was on the data preview before, you saw my return values. So you see that's, um, these are the average ratings per year. Looks like 1925 was not a good year for movies. And uh, uh, 1902 was a great year for movies now. And negative 1980 was not a good year for movies either. Okay, now uh, let me show you what happens then if you do get um, changing data sources. So in this case, uh, let me go over to my um, to my Excel spreadsheet for a second here. Okay, and you will see that I have a second copy of the same data set that I kind of goofed around with the um, some of the column names a little bit. I um, uppercased the first character in the word title. I changed genre to genre, 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 and I uppercased all of year. I also took out that annoying Rotten Tomato misspelled column and took it out completely. So because I'm using um, rule-based mapping and because we support schema drift, and have that checkbox set right here, so if new columns come in, I'll also be able to pass those through and land them as well. In this case, I took out a column, but remember my canonical model is mapped right here to only these four columns that are needed throughout the lifetime of my data flow um, downstream. And so what I can do now is I can have these other files that come in and everything will work just fine. So all we'll do is we'll just change this source to, I called this, um, I called this movies DB2. Let's take a look at that to make sure that, that is correct. That is pointing there, correct. And in fact, if we do a preview here from the data set, you'll also see that we have the interesting name column titles there. Great. So back on the data flow. Now that we've changed to a data set that um, has slightly different shape to it, we don't have to change anything. That, if this changes, so we could parameterize this data set when we execute this data flow from a pipeline, everything will work just fine. So let's go all the way back over to the average rating by year. Let's refresh and let's see if we get the exact same results. And there we go. Uh, average rating of one for the of 1980, 7.0 for 1902, and 825 was the only one we saw was 4.29. So that's it. So that's the way to use rule-based mapping to create resilient data flows.